There's a podcast that you will want to add to your playlist, Warriors for Christ. That's the number four. Warriors for Christ is a Christian podcast providing biblical teaching without the doctrines of man. In other words, they like to let the Bible explain itself. The format includes non-denominational readings and teachings from the Bible. They also have interviews and whatever the Lord puts on their hearts to present. Life in this world can be very stressful and filled with anxieties. Warriors for Christ will give you the biblical information you need to help deal with all life has to bring. Warriors for Christ confronts many false doctrines which are pervasive in this age and what some call the church in a box. And they also offer a full gospel ministry. Find Warriors for Christ on Podomatic, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Player FM, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Podcast, and Spotify. Warriors for Christ. Share the podcast on all of your social media so your friends can listen to Warriors for Christ. That's the number four. Add it to your playlist right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So the American justice system works, uh, at least in the case of Kyle Rittenhouse. You know, Kyle Rittenhouse, Found not guilty on all counts, which is almost near impossible. Incredible. And, you know, I I was confident that he was going to be found not guilty until the moment the jury came back in. I I saw the look on his face. He looked sick. And I I felt sick. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, because there's that moment, you know, you have all the confidence in the world. And I'm sure he felt confident in their decision. I'm sure his team told him, don't worry, don't worry. But you never know. Well, you know, I and well, here's the thing. When when the jury came back and I saw Kyle, I, I just assumed, and I was very confident until I saw the, the jury come back. I just assumed because a small little place that the defense attorneys had a pretty good idea of what was coming down. And when I, because it was such a small place, and when I saw the look on Kyle's face and his body language, I was like, uh oh. I wonder if they hear ahead of time if there's people Mm-mm. that leak it out no. to the lawyers and say the, he's, he's no, acquitted. The, uh, no, no. And the uh, court bailiffs and things are not inside the room to hear all that. They're outside. They don't have a bailiff inside no, at all. No, unless okay. there's a big problem, a big problem. No. So nobody, nobody's supposed to know until they read it. And when you see these high profile cases from OJ to this, when they give the decision to the judge, you're watching the judge on TV, they're going through the papers, they're reading the decision, and they're always like zero emotion. You can't get a read on oh. the judges. But, you know, this, this Kyle Rittenhouse case, I'm glad, I'm very glad it turned out this way because mm-hmm. here we are, like, day, it took four days right. for them to come back. And there were all kinds of reports, which we don't know if they were true or not. There was a report yesterday on Newsmax TV. One of the defense attorneys was overheard in the hallway saying the jury was split 6-6. Six, six. That's clearly not true. Jack Prasobic earlier in the week had a story saying that there were two holdouts. And, you know, the thing about this, that was getting me nervous on the, on the fourth day when they were reading the verdicts because I thought – because it's Friday when the verdict came in, right? Verdict comes in on Friday. These people want to get home for the weekend. They've been with this trial. They're burned. They don't want to deal with it anymore. Right. And I was afraid there was like a compromise because this morning it was re- being reported that there was a 6-6 six, six split right. in the morning. and Which clearly is not true. They, they couldn't have changed their mi- yeah. six people's minds in two hours. No way. So in the afternoon, it start, in the morning, six, split 6-6 six, six is all the stories. Yeah. Afternoon, there's a decision. And I thought when I saw Kyle Rittenhouse standing there, Oh, they must have compromised on some of the lesser charges, which could still send him to the lockup for a long time. And not guilty on all counts, five counts, which is amazing. And, you know, this this is a lot of things are going on here. People in this country, because over the last year and a half, Antifa have been running crazy in this country and nobody did and nobody did a thing about it not a damn thing no and if you remember antifa attacked the white house yeah when president trump and melania and Barron were home they had to take the first family into the bunker and uh, a couple of dozen secret service agents were injured in this attack 
and they were they lo- were like wild gangs running around coast the country, to coast. just coast to coast, with nobody stopping them, no, nobody investigating them, nobody still not. to this day still looking not, into who's funding them. Who's, nothing. When it comes to this trial, what you need to do is look at the left and look who they're defending. Yeah. Look, who, they're all defending Antifa That's right. as usual. I know they come out and say, and, and they attack Kyle, but they're really defending criminals. They're defending Antifa. And, you know, they're, they've called them all these names. Uh, I mean, even Joe Biden last year said he was a uh, member of a white supremacy militia group. That's a complete yeah, lie. That's the, a complete lie. At the beginning of the week, Jen Psaki called Kyle Rittenhouse a vigilante. So, awful. you know, Antifa has been running wild in this country for a year and a half. It's been allowed. In fact, what happened in Kenosha mm-hmm. the night that these, this terrible thing happened with Kyle Rittenhouse – it happened because local authorities turned this turned the town over to to Antifa. Well, they interviewed so, two people that lived there after the trial, and they were driving by in this pickup truck, and they were asking their opinion. And the lady said, "Good for him. You know, he was defending a local business." And she said, "The governor should have had the national guard here." And she basically said, "F him." And she said, yeah. "That's why that happened." Well, you know. People have almost given up on the American system because, yeah. look, they impeach Trump even when he's out of office, you know, and people feel that this radical mob of yes. Antifa are bullying the country. And this not guilty verdict shows that they are not. And now, you know, everyone, of course, in the news is talking about Kyle Rittenhouse suing all these media outlets. I hope you, know, so. you know, that's a very good thing. Mm-hmm. That, you know, Nick Sandman had that big lawsuit. Right. The media are out of control. They're low class bottom feeders who feed off of people's misery, and you know they're in, they're in this thing where everyone that they don't like is is a racist or something. Even if you're black, and, they called uh, that woman who was voted the lieutenant governor of Virginia Winsome Sears. Yeah, they called her a white supremacist yeah. too. Remember, I mean, Larry, they Elder. They Larry Elder. They don't Larry Elder too. Exactly. Leo Terrell. Yeah. They don't even know what they're saying. They're on autopilot. They're out of their minds. They're on autopilot, and they don't have an argument. So all they get. So now their whole thing with Kyle is, if he was black, he wouldn't get away with this. And and this, mm-hmm. they they don't focus on the people that he was dealing with. They're not going to focus on these criminals and, you know, instead they're going to go after this 17, 18 year old kid who was asked to be there, asked to defend a business because the governor wouldn't defend it. The Antifa was running amok all over the uh, the country, destroying businesses. People were scared. Business owners were scared. And the guy who asked Kyle and his friends to come defend his business he had to because the government wasn't going to do it. The government's job is to protect you. That's what our taxes pay for. But they didn't send in anybody to to protect his business. So I guess he felt he had no other choice than to bring in regular people. Well, and this wasn't the first night of violence in, no. in Kenosha. It was going on the night before. Yeah, it was a couple nights. And the, the, there's a lot of issues that are important here. One, unmasking Antifa mm-hmm. and people. I mean, think about this. Kyle Rittenhouse encountered four individuals one-on-one. The the guy that was trying to kick his head in like Reginald Denny, you yeah. know, had happened to him. The And the three that he shot. Of those four, three of them are felons. That's you right. know, and that that's what Antifa is. And okay? keep in mind, Brian, as the left attacks Kyle and defends Antifa, there's video of all this. Okay, when this first broke, I was saying that Kyle was acting like a vigilante and I was saying that what he did was wrong. But I was going by what I saw in the press. And now that I saw the trial and saw the footage, I quickly changed my mind, admitted I was definitely wrong on that, did a 180. Everybody has seen the footage now. Everybody has seen there's video, there's video of this stuff taking place. How often does that happen? And if you see the video for yourself, It is clear that he was being chased. People were throwing things at him. One guy had a gun to his head. They were trying to hit him with things and this and that. It's clear that he was reacting to them. They weren't reacting to him. He was running away and his actions were due to their actions towards him. He was defending himself. It was obvious. So anybody who you have Cuomo 
uh, Jerry Nadler. You have all these politicians now that have come out that are calling him a white supremacist. That is very reckless. And let me tell you, whoever Nick Sandman's lawyer is, he should be calling Kyle this afternoon and making an appointment with that kid. Well, and an- another thing about you know everything that's going on with Kyle Rittenhouse, he should go after the media. The yep. media have zero journalistic integrity that's any true. longer. Just zero. They have yeah. negative integrity. That's right. And you know this really, it it didn't start with Trump. The media has always been liberal, but it really started at, uh, around the time where the current state of the media yeah. started around the time that George W. Bush was running for reelection. The media became what very— What about Clinton? No, nah, they became more activist now. You know, if you go back to the Clinton era, reporters were asking difficult questions from all the mainstream media mm-hmm. outlets. They've gotten—they're just activists. You know, one yeah. of the—I talk about this a lot because it's so, it's so true. One of the reasons the media is this way, they're this way for a number of reasons, but one of them is this. In the old days, before you had the internet and so much cable news— there were only a hand. There were the three nightly news, just a handful of media outlets. Mm-hmm. So the people that got on the air, you know, pr- prior to the '90s when the internet happened, the the cream of the crop, the best of the best, rose to the top. They might have been liberal, but they were, you know, they had some integrity. Now there's so much media, mm-hmm. there's so much time and spots to fill. Bottom feeders that would be lucky to get jobs as interns are now handed primetime shows five days a week. Yeah. And, you know, like Rachel Maddow, I'll give you an example. Rachel Maddow, the first time I heard of her, she did, a sh- she did mornings on Air America Radio. Remember that Al Franken thing that went, mm-hmm. that liberal radio network? And the, these, there's a difference between being an editorialist and being a news person. I'm an editorialist. You know, I talk about the news. I bring people the news. But I'm an editorialist. I'm not a newsman. Joy Reid... Rachel Maddow and these opinionators believe they're the modern-day Walter Cronkites, and they feel that they are bringing you the news from their perspective, and they're just so right. And And they're wrong so, like, 95% of the time. They're so wrong. And some of the reactions that have been happening since the the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict came out, Black Lives Matter has Mm -hmm. been talking, others have been talking. These are, you know, this social justice warrior group of people we have now. These social justice warriors believe that every white person should be convicted of a crime to somehow right past wrongs that happened before any of us were alive. And that's what being a social justice warrior is about. I think they're trying to, it seems These, like, yeah, the, it, it, I agree. Very strange. And it, I just feel like they want to label all white people White well, they've done that. That's what critical race theory and, is all And about. somebody wrote an article that uh, what happened today was white privilege, you know, that he has a privileged life and he's, uh, you know, uh, living in a privileged community and, and he's benefiting from this and being white and this and that. You know, I don't think what he's been through has been a privilege at all. I think he would disagree. It's probably been very traumatic. His lawyer said he hasn't slept. That's why he's yawning so much. He hasn't been sleeping. He's having nightmares. He's dealing with PTSD. Um, You know, he put himself in that situation, but I don't think he went there and thinking, I'm going to kill people tonight. I think it was, you know, he's a young kid, and I think he was just reacting in the moment to what was happening. And and I really believe if he didn't react that way, one of those guys would have killed him. Um, And it shows you the fact that he had to defend himself four times in one night shows you how dangerous Antifa is. Oh, yeah. And and the left are just – I think it's so funny that they're defending these people. Uh, they're defending convicted felons, and they're, and they're attacking this innocent kid. But I don't know how much of them really believe what they're saying or how many of them are pandering. Politicians are always pandering to people and their base or you know, telling people what they want to hear. But like Joy Reid and these people – you know, they, she really believes this stuff. She really hates white people. And she really believes that all white people are bigots, that they're, that they live a privileged life. Meanwhile, she went to Harvard. She makes millions of dollars a year and she is on a network, a network news show, but she's not privileged. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. She she just doesn't like white people, period. That, that Harvard degree is the keys to the kingdom. It's the golden Absolutely. ticket. You're, you're, she's in a club that very few people are in. She has access to things. Well, you know, I the, and Kyle Rittenhouse, 
he'll never be able to go to a regular school, not in person for college, because every university, unless he goes to Hillsdale, every school mm -hmm. is they filled him a with scholarship. Black Lives Matter, Antifa types. He will never be able to have a normal life. You know who he reminds me a little bit of? Uh, I mean, the, the treatment that he's going through, yeah. not, not appearance or the exact situation, but Richard Jewell. Richard Jewell was a completely innocent man. He did nothing wrong. Poor Richard Jewell. That he, was sad. For those that don't know, he was falsely accused by um, the, the government of being the Olympic Park bomber. In the media, basically. And the media. They pulled him through the That's ringer, right. too. There's, that, there's a good movie that came out about him a couple years ago. A Clint Eastwood movie. Yeah, you guys should see it. But R Richard Jewell's life was destroyed. He's no yeah. longer with us. He passed sad, away. Sad. And that's a lot of what I see with Kyle Rittenhouse. This is yeah. going to follow him for the rest of his life. He, you know, what do you think will happen? What do you think he'll do? I don't, I don't think he's going to work for Matt Gates. What do you think he'll, I, I could see him, um, you know, things will settle down and this is what I see. I see him moving to a small town, becoming a police officer you know, that's what Richard Jewell did. He became a cop, and that's kind of how I – yeah. I know he said he was in nursing school. I don't see that happening. But I could see him getting in law enforcement. He needs to live in a very conservative place, South Dakota or Florida, Florida in, in the conservative part. Um, he needs to live in a conservative area, definitely not L.A. or New York or anything like that. And I could see him getting into something like that. But you know what? If he sues the media and makes the, a lot of money like Nick Salmon, he might never have to work again. And That's right. Just, I wonder, do you think he's going to do some interviews? Do you think he's going to like be on no, Tucker? I don't, I, don't, I don't expect to see him do any interviews, uh, not for a while, because it, well, it depends if he's taking these lawsuits uh, as a serious he thing. He might have to wait. He may not do any interviews and, and start these civil lawsuits. Now, True. here we are. In the Christmas shopping season, and there is no better gift than something from my pillow. And when you go to mypillow.com and you use our promo code Kane at checkout, they're just incredible deals. I have a link in the description of the episode to our my pillow page that has very, very exciting deals. Fifty percent off the my pillow, my slippers. Uh the my pillow towel set, normally a hundred and ten dollars, just thirty nine ninety nine. The um my pillow mattress topper. Again, the link is in the description of this episode, and you must use the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, 50% uh, off the MyPillow mattress topper. This is an incredible deal, and every size mattress, they have the MyPillow mm. mattress topper. Kathy and I have the MyPillow mattress topper. It's spectacular. How many people contact us and tell us how much they love oh, it? I every mean, day. Every day I All hear the from time. People. I just heard from somebody yesterday yeah, in the chat. Every day I hear from people someone. People message us. and The MyPillow mattress They topper, all love it. It will change your life. I, it's 50% off with the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, 50% off. When I wake up in the morning on the MyPillow mattress topper, it is it's a comfortable. It's complete peace. It's like I'm sleeping on a cloud. Mm -hmm. I never have an ache or a pain in my back or any part of my body. No, it's true. And and we have a a, a pretty new mattress. And I used I, to wake I, up in pain every morning. Oh yeah, literally like my back and everything. I I don't wake up in pain at all anymore. It's really amazing. Yeah. So there is a link in the description of this episode to our my, uh, my pillow page, which has very exclusive, very big deals. Huge savings on everything there, uh, not just the items we mentioned. And again, use the promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, and uh, you'll get uh, you'll be able to take advantage of all those incredible, incredible deals. So, you know, just talk a little bit more about the Kyle Rittenhouse acquittal on all counts, which is absolutely amazing. You know, we re this country really needed this. The country really needed to see that our system of justice works and what what the left wanted to do with Kyle Rittenhouse was lynch him. They want him convicted mm -hmm. and go to jail because well, they want to get even with with white people. There's a there's a racial anger going on in this country towards yeah. towards white people that um you and know, that anger is being stoked. getting out of control. It's being stoked by the, by media. the media and politicians. That's right. You have Cuomo releasing a statement. Uh he's got his own problems. But when you have him releasing a statement today saying that there was no justice and Kyle Rittenhouse is a white supremacist, that does not help. And the only reason he's doing that, I don't know why he's, I don't think he believes that. He's just saying that because he's, he's 
pandering to a certain group of people and telling him what he thinks he wants to hear. Cause I still think he's going to run for president. And, well, there was or a, whatever, you know, he's um, got his own, his own ambitions. Uh, there was a woman, uh, out in front of the Rittenhouse courthouse today. And, uh, I'll play this for you. She is, this is right outside the courthouse. And, uh, I'll describe it to you after I play it. I saw it. this. This is crazy. <laughs> In the back, we got people. Oh my gosh. Okay. And this is like performance. She's art. hyperventilating and she said, F America. Yeah. She collapsed on the ground in front of the courthouse. I and now and, and now she's pretending as if she's having a yeah, seizure. It's a total fake. it's total BS. Yeah. You know, the the left have really lost their minds yeah, when they, they take an instance. That involves all white people. I, I know. And try crazy. to turn it into a racial incident. It's crazy. It doesn't even make sense. It makes no sense. And it shows you how fake these groups are and how they have no conviction at all. They just want to destroy and raise money. They don't really, they're not convicted people. They don't, they don't really care about the black movement or anything like that. All they care about is getting on TV and getting donations and, and breaking crap up. That's all they care about. Yeah. Here's a here's an audio I want to play of Trump when they asked him about Kyle last year. Let me let me rewind this. Hold on. That was an interesting situation. You saw the same tape as I saw. And uh, he was trying to get away from them, I guess, it looks like. And he fell. And then they very violently attacked him. And it was something that we're looking at right now, and it's under investigation. But uh, I I guess he was in very big trouble. He would have been, he probably would have been killed. But it's it's under investigation. Well, it shows so that's, you that's President Trump last year. It shows you Trump is always right. Always right. He is always right. That's he right. is never wrong. Nope. No. And because he's yeah. he's rational. He he's, sees and, he's, he he sees what's right in front of him. And he's not pandering. He no. should, he watched the videos that were out at the time, and boom, he's got the conclusion, and that's that. And the you hear the media, the out of control media, oh, yeah. calling him a vigilante on national television. You know, I'm very cautious when I talk about things. I'm very cautious. Yeah. You know, I don't go out and slander people. You know, and and accuse people of of being criminals and all kinds of other things yeah. without any evidence. In fact, even in this case, I stayed away from this case in the beginning until more information came out. You know, you got to be a little. But the media, you know, the media got a lot of problems, and the twenty four hour news cycle mm-hmm. is is a big problem because that's a lot of time to fill. It is, and they have to fill it by creating crises all the time and yeah. that is what they do now a lot of people are are talking about well there's no violence in in kenosha what's that all about why not because it is not an election year the democrat mm. machine doesn't have the buses operating to take um you cry you know these these people to these zones and cause cause havoc yeah, i don't think anything's going to happen if, tonight they've been playing it up playing it up on the media in the media today, I think that's what they want. If this was an election year, yeah. okay, next year's the election year. If yeah. this were an election year, there would be problems in Kenosha after this verdict because yeah. the activists would bring in the people to, to right. cause an issue. That's but there's what no they benefit do. to it. There's not no right now because them, it's not right. an election year. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's why, that's why that is. All right, now listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, there's a lot more to talk about. Do not go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Imagine if you could combine your love of crypto with just about any vanity or lifestyle theme. Well, now you can at StellarShop.org. StellarShop brings themes to life in cryptocurrency and is the originator of vanity and lifestyle money in the new and exciting world of cryptocurrency. Align your money with causes you care about, like dolphins and sea turtles or anything in between. From Woodstock to MedBeds, they have over 100 to choose from so you can buy, sell, trade, or swap crypto on the 
Stellar XLM Network. Stellar Shop also has over 20 charity themes that benefit from your usage. Grab your favorite Stellar wallet and join the revolution and the future of money through blockchain quantum finance. Stellar Shop also sets up custom-made business crypto and payment systems for any business. Get in on the crypto craze, and maybe you can be the one telling that next crazy crypto story. Visit StellarShop.org today for vanity and lifestyle crypto assets. That's S-T-E-L-L-A-R-S-H-O-P dot org. From author Sherry Chapman comes the book, A Killer Revisited, available on Amazon. Detective Jules Poulton is one of the best at tracking down murderers, but something beyond her experience came to Edmond, Oklahoma. When the serial killer reaches out in a cryptic letter, it reveals a government conspiracy at the highest level. Will she be able to stop an army experiment gone rogue? Find out when you read A Killer Revisited. If you love thrillers, you will love this book. With a well-thought-out plot, lots of twists and turns, it will keep you you engaged and captivated. This is a true thriller from beginning to end. A Killer Revisited from author Sherry Chapman. Available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. From author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs comes your next must-read book, Until Now. Available on Amazon. Until Now is a book about the first 25 years of the author's life. It includes childhood trauma, abuse, and the author being forced to hide their true self, being abandoned, and many, many other things. The author's hope is to reach readers that can relate and let them know that they are not alone in their trauma. They are not at fault for the terrible things that's happened to them. They are not victims, but are survivors, and together we can get through anything. Author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs has been writing poetry since childhood and until now includes the author's life story, but also includes related poetry between chapters. Until now, from author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs. Order your copy right now on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So in the aftermath of the Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty verdict, the left have just, they're, they're dealing with it's like the stages of grief. The left <laughs> over the weekend oh, yeah. on television are like in mourning over someone being acquitted for defending their life. And I thought we would go through some of these. The first one I want to play is Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd seems to, if you watch the video of this, he's not only sympathetic to the Antifa guys that were, you know, the felons that were trying to kill Kyle Rittenhouse, yeah. that he was acquitted. For, you know, in those killings. Um, he has sympathy for the attempted killers of Kyle Rittenhouse. And he's fighting back tears. He's all broken up as he's talking about it. So let's start with Chuck Todd. This is Chuck Todd. Meet the press over the weekend. Check it out. Hey, Brian David Henderson, a civil rights attorney here. And David, if you're the family of, of the, the dead um, victims here. What's your next, um, do you have another place to go? What did Mr. Huber's and Mr. Rosenbaum's family go? Do they? Okay. Now, he didn't know their names, so he was, you know, he's got a lot of sympathy for them, but not enough to know their names. So somebody fed him the names, so mm-hmm. he got the names at the end. Right. But in this, it doesn't translate in the audio as much as the video. He's fighting back tears. For these guys, but there's also another thing with Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd, in my opinion, I, I do not have inside information just watching what's going on. Chuck Todd's about to lose Meet the Press. They're going to give it to Rachel Maddow. They, I agree. They just signed a new deal with yeah. Rachel Maddow. That's our prediction. Yeah. They're paying her millions more a year for just doing weekends. She's going to be leaving her yeah. weekday show. I think they're going to give her Meet the Press on Sunday, I which agree. is the crown jewel of NBC right. News. I agree. And Chuck Todd is going to be demoted to doing the weekday version of Meet the Press. Or completely. Um, or gone. Gone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or gone. So he could be broken up and crying over the loss of Meet the Press. I think so. Oh, more than, than these uh, victims, but we're not exactly sure. But let me go through these other ones, though, because uh, a lot of people over the weekend have been commenting, liberals all, on the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict. So let's just go through them. One by 
one. Let me start with Kamala Harris, who was president for 85 minutes Mm. on Friday. She was acting president for 85 minutes while Joe Biden got his colonoscopy. And, you know, one of the White House reporters over the weekend, the um, NB, I think it's the NBC White House reporter, asked asked Jen Psaki if they could have a press briefing with Biden's doctor since he is the oldest president in mm-hmm. history and, and who gave him, of course, a clean bill of health. He's mentally and physically fit. Give me a break. Who's how this can quack? You, how can you determine that? <laughs> how can you? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, let's talk hold, about doctor shopping. Hold, hold, no, no, no. Hold on. Let's think of this for a second because I read this too and I couldn't help but laugh. He has a colonoscopy. I've had a colonoscopy. I've a never lot had of us, I know what it's all about. I don't know how he can determine he's in great health by looking up his ass. Well, that's where his brain's at, I guess. No, no, it, <laughs> Kathy, no. it was a complete physical. That was only part of the okay. complete physical. I mean, it's just kind of weird yeah. that he held a colonoscopy and then no. the doctor's like, no, no, no. He's perfectly healthy. You really can't determine somebody's health by having a colonoscopy. I've had one. They don't give you a physical typically. Yeah. They just knock you out. They go, you know, yeah. in that area, check around, yeah. take tissue samples. Boom. It was a, that's I, it. I, we know what it is, Kathy. We don't need the details. No, I'm just saying it's kind of Biden's. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of funny that he determined he was perfectly healthy by looking up his well, rectum. This this quack, this quack who gave him a clean bill I mean, of we health think about it, mentally funny. and physically. Yeah. I'd love to see a press conference with this with this quack. Un- unlike Ronnie Jackson when he was President Trump's doctor. So anyway, Kamala Harris, she was acting president for 85 minutes mm. on Friday. And I'm surprised she gave it back. This was her opportunity to bring in the 25th Amendment. But she actually, <laughs> not only did she comment on the Kyle Rittenhouse oh, God. case, she did something very strange. So let me play this for you, and then we'll talk about it. Hey, guys. Well, it was a good trip, and um, they have questions about the verdict, and the verdict really speaks for it. Okay. So she gets out of a call. She li- Kamala Harris is a big poser, okay? Would she, she For some reason, Kamala Harris loves to be on camera getting in and out of vehicles. She just thinks she looks so cool getting out of vehicles. It's a Jerry Bruckheimer moment. She really likes that. I'm surprised they don't show her in slow-mo. They did during the campaign sometimes. Yeah, she really loves that whole, you're right, that's the only time I ever see her is getting in and out of planes and train. I mean, she, uh, her favorite planes thing, and cars. Her favorite thing to do is go from a plane, yeah. walk off a plane, go into directly a big, into a vehicle. Into a big gas guzzling so, SUV. So in this one, she's getting out of the SUV and she goes up to the press and asks the press a question. Do you have any questions about the verdict? She didn't even wait for a question. She wow. was dying to talk about it. So let me let me play. This is her talking about it. Hey guys, well, it was a good trip and um, they have questions about the verdict. As many of you know, I've spent a majority of my career working to make the criminal justice system more equitable, and clearly there's a lot more work to do. Thanks. Thanks, all. Okay, she's joking, right? So she said she has spent her life Mm. making the criminal justice system more equitable, and clearly there's more work to do. Which means what? That all white people on trial are to be convicted? What what work is she talking about? Well, she's done the exact opposite because aren't I aren't, – maybe I'm mistaken, but didn't she pass – didn't she put a lot of black guys in jail for yep. minor infractions no, when she, she was the attorney general? She put a, a black men and women in California. She put um, a lot of African Americans in jail for – uh, minor drug offenses, as well yeah. as she was the attorney general of California. As that was well. a big issue with the black community with her. So I don't know what the hell she's talking about. As well as parents she put uh, put in jail f- because their kids were skipping school. That's right. But when she says she was working on equity and there's no equity here, it makes no sense. No, sense. she's as, pandering. Unless she, th- well, I don't think she's pandering. I think she's mental. She she thinks all white people on trial should be found guilty because as a white person, you are guilty of being white anyway. That's right. So you should do time. So now we go to Fox News Channel. This is Juan Williams. I thought when he left the Ugh. five, they were getting rid of Juan Williams. Here he is. Well, I think the, one of the realities is that the jury made a decision, and I think a considered decision after lengthy, three days obviously, Shannon, uh, looking at the facts of the case and looking at the law. And I think that's where we have to go. I think there are lots of people who are concerned that someone crossing into another state with a weapon. Okay, now, now, Juan Williams, this is over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Kyle Rittenhouse did not travel across state lines with a weapon. 
They just keep that narrative Matt, so, going, so even Juan, though it's not so, true. So Juan Williams has a strong opinion that right. an injustice was done, and he doesn't even know the basics of the no. case. So you're hearing a very uneducated, un, uh, right. uninformed opinion from Juan Williams. But um, let's get back to it because he, he's just totally wrong about that. And, and another thing on this, I'm tired of them talking about state lines. State lines are lines on a map. Okay, they are not real borders like the southern no. border that they've opened up. No. And I think that's where we have to go. I think there are lots of people who are concerned that someone crossing into another state with a weapon, uh, you know, a, a, a really a, a, a vicious weapon, uh, is now under the law allowed to engage in what looked like vigilantism. Okay, vigilant. He was attacked. Now, this is after the verdict. He was attacked by four people. Mm hmm. One tried to shoot him. One tried to bash his head in. The other two tried to steal his gun. I don't know where he's getting vigilanteism. Well, he's so concerned about people crossing state lines with weapons. How about Antifa uh, being shipped in through buses with baseball Nation bats right. and exactly. Molotov cocktails? And what about those guys with their weapons? You no. can kill somebody with a baseball bat. You can kill somebody with a skateboard. Are they from Kenosha? No, yeah. they're shipped in from other places. Is he concerned exactly. with that too? Exactly. Let's get back to it. Into another state with a weapon, uh, you know, a, a, a really a, a, a vicious weapon, uh, is now under the law allowed to engage in what looked like vigilantism. Give me a break. And you think about conceal uh, right to carry laws. You think about stand your ground laws. The whole notion of self-defense when you're dealing with someone who's armed is now we've gone away from the idea of you are responsible when possible to step back if you're armed. Now, with these new laws, you know, if you shoot, I mean, then you can say that you felt threatened. I think if, you know, one other thought is if this had been a black teenager who had done this, wow, I think the laws might have treated him a little differently. They yeah. don't know that. Yeah, he's right. If Kyle Rittenhouse was black and the guys chasing him and trying to kill him were white, he wouldn't have even been brought up on charges. Probably there would have been no trial. But they so, keep yeah. they keep bringing up this hypothetical, and they don't know if that's true or not. There was an article where there was a, a black kid who was a school shooter. Remember, it happened about a month ago, and they let him out on bail, and he went home. Remember, he shot, but he didn't kill. He I, I don't know if he killed anybody, but he shot a bunch of people. They ended up in the hospital. It was in the news. Mm -hmm. He got okay. let out on bail that day Shocking. and went home with his family. They didn't, you know, mm -hmm. so this whole narrative of if he was black or this or that, that's not true anymore. This isn't the 80s or the 60s or whatever. Things are different now. And to throw that out there and to just say, well, you know, if he was black, that's just saying that there's no proof of that happening now. In fact, just the opposite, like you mm -hmm. said, is what takes place. But these people, I think a lot of, Black people, and I could be wrong, but I think a lot of them feel obligated to their community to toe this line. Not these people. These people are true believing. You think so? Racist, you think yeah. you think Juan Williams really believes yeah. that, or yes. do you think he yes. feels because yes. he's a black man? No. he has to say his this. mind is gone. Or he'll no. be called. You know, no, something. no, no, no. He believe they all believe this. All right, now here's reaction from CNN. I'm wondering, Charles, you point out his age, you know, um, Sarah, 17 year old, now 18. Do you think his age played any any role in the verdict? The fact that he was so young? Well, Pamela, I don't necessarily think that it's just his age. I think we have to be very clear about what that means. Go. I think that what we have seen throughout the course of this trial, be it from the judge, be it from right wing media, be it from the public in many cases, we've seen a consistent infantilization of Kyle Rittenhouse in front of the public. And I think part of that was strategic by the defense, the way that he presented on the stand, the way that he presented in court to remind the jury that he was young. But in terms of his age, I want to be very clear about something we've seen many instances where people who were not like Kyle Rittenhouse, and I am referring to race in this instance, took the stand. I'm referring to the exonerated five in New York, also known as the Central Park Five, where they were not treated with the same delicacy and shielded by their age. And so there is a certain level of privilege that we have to acknowledge when you talk about how age played a role. I do believe that age was a factor. However, I think that it was amplified by the fact that he enjoyed the privilege of being infantilized. And I think that that also may have resonated with the jury as well. Okay, now this they, now this reference they keep making to the Central Park case, mm -hmm. with, as a textbook example of racist juries, one thing they leave out is 
That was a New York City jury. That means you had a jury of Democrats right. in a Democrat town with a Democrat judge. That's right. So I'll agree with all these liberals, like this this joker on CNN, that racist Democrats in New York may, have, may you know, racist verdicts, no doubt about it. All right, now, Joy, I got two more clips. The next one, Joy Reid, she took off on her show Ugh. last night, right? She was off for some She's reason. She's a horrible woman. And even though she took the night off and had a guest host, she was brought in via Zoom as a guest on her own show because That's she weird. had to comment on the verdict. Yeah. So here, here's Joy Reid as a guest on her own show <laughs> commenting on the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict. This country was built on the idea. Of, uh, I love how she talks so slowly so that mm-hmm. we can absorb every utterance. Mm-hmm. This country was built on the idea of, of that white men had a, a, a particular kind of freedom and a particular kind of citizenship that only they have. That gives, you know, from the slave catchers on the oh right to inflict gosh. violence um, in the name of protecting property. That's like the foundational creation insane. of the United States. So it would have been shocking. The real, as I'm glad you mentioned the Derek Chauvin verdict. That was the surprising verdict. This should have been unsurprising. But what I do think we have to think about is not only the families of the two men who died and the family of Mr. Grosskreutz. They are, you know, they yeah, the the felons, the sex offender should be in our minds right now because they suffered, and there have been a lot of white people who have you know, defended black lives and paid for it with their lives. That goes all throughout our history, going back to John Brown and go through the civil rights movement. But what I am concerned about is the precedent this sets for what people will believe that they can do under law when Black Lives Matter protests happen in the future. And that people may use this as an excuse to start going out of state and doing what this teenager did, believing that they'll get away with it. And in some cases, getting away with it. Self-defense. Getting away with self-defense when people are trying to kill you. Can she ever make an argument without bringing up race? I don't think it's possible. They keep talking about Kyle, what he did. They just totally ignore what Antifa has done. They completely, they feel that their rioting and looting is completely justified. They really do. They really believe that they have every right to go into a town that they don't live in destroy all the businesses yep. and then leave and leave all this millions of dollars in damage. People, I remember the one thing where a woman had a hair salon, this black woman, and they went in and just, or a beauty shop and destroyed her entire business, not in Kenosha, but another city when Antifa was going on and she was on the news crying. And she's just like, they don't live here. These people, they bust them in and they come in and they destroy everything. Why do these people on the left insist on defending that kind of behavior? I don't understand. And and they terrorized the country for months and months that summer. Nobody did anything to stop it. Nobody talked about it on the news. And, and they, they did the opposite. They went on the news and said, nothing to see here. This is peaceful. This is, they lied to you. And I don't understand even to this where they are still, de- and they're all criminals. And they're still defending these people. I don't. Kyle Rittenhouse was not a, a criminal. He did not have a criminal past or a record like these other people. There's clear. Even Chris Cuomo said on CNN that it was a self defense thing. He even said that the jury came to the right conclusion based on the video evidence. You see him being chased through the town by people. One guy had a gun. Another guy was throwing yeah. things at him. Kyle was not chasing anybody. He was not on a, a shooting spree like Nicholas Cruz or any of these people. They're trying to make him like a Nick Cruz. Like he you, went there and shot up the place. If it's you crazy. Listen to these liberal commentators on television, too. These guys that were attacking Kyle Rittenhouse, except the one that tried to bash his head in. Yeah. They were Antifa. Okay. And they and when you listen to the liberal commentators on TV. They keep calling them Black Lives Matter, yep. and they, they say you don't have to be black to be BLM, and these are white allies, and they're not Black Lives Matter. No. They're not they're, – they're Antifa, and That's they're right. criminals looking for an excuse. Now, I saved the best for last. This is Tiffany Cross oh boy. who took over Joy Reid's weekend show, and uh, she, you, you, this is um, probably Another the most winner. racist show on television. And MSNBC t- has a problem yeah, here's, with racism. Here's Tiffany Cross. 
I find these people disgusting, Ellie. I'm disgusted at what I'm seeing. It's not just this trial, it's other trials. But this in particular, the fact that white supremacists roam the halls of Congress freely and celebrate this little murderous white supremacist. Wow. Okay, now slow down here. She's, I, I think she believes every white Republican's a white supremacist. I think so too. I'd like to hear her name some names. She says, this little white supremacist? Wow. The, the people he shot in self-defense were all white. What, what? Evidence does she have that None. he's racist or a white supremacist? None. And she should really go on the list. I agree. Of, of, of people that are, well, saying things about Kyle Rittenhouse that are slanderous. I think CNN, because I was watching Chris Cuomo interview his attorney, and he was very civil, and I couldn't believe it. And then when him and Don Lemon were talking, they were defend, they were actually praising Kyle's lawyers. And they were they were actually saying that this was a self-defense thing. I think CNN is afraid of getting sued. They already have this issue with Nick Sandman. And I think they're afraid of getting sued again. And I think the the commentators are afraid of losing their jobs mm. because they've gone so far to the left. Now, MSNBC is completely gone. They have CNN, I think, is trying to pull things back a little bit and try to get back to center because there's rumors that they're going to rebrand and fire everybody because the ratings are so bad. MSNBC, they have a bunch of racists that work there. They they absolutely have a problem at that network. I never watch it, but they spew hate, pure hatred well, towards the white community, and that needs to be resolved. Now, let me rewind just a little bit. It's really sickening. Uh, Tiffany Cross went on for quite a while here saying a lot of crazy Sure things. she did trial as other trials, but this in particular, the fact that white supremacists roam the halls of Congress freely and celebrate this little murderous white supremacist and the fact that he gets to walk the streets freely, it lets you know these people have access to instituting uh, laws. They represent the legislative branch of this country. What are we to make of that? Okay. Now, what she's she's saying is, so, you know, this was a self-defense case. Mm -hmm. He was found not guilty because the jury determined he shot the people he shot mm -hmm. in self-defense. So she is acting as if right. this is just not, a, not allowed. Right. Welcome to the modern Republican Party. This is what these people want. Right. And this is what a majority of white people vote for. Right? Right. When I say that a majority of white people are in favor of this kind of violence. Self-defense. Wow. It is that because is a majority of white people consistently vote Republican. Consi you know, since... The passage of the Civil Rights Act, a majority of white people have voted Republican, right? So, like, this is the party that they're supporting. A majority of white people pick judges like Bruce Schrader, the judge in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. A majority of white people do not wow. support policies that would unpack and unroll and reform this system of justice. This is what they want. Matt Gates is giving the white folks what they want. Look at it. Look at yourselves. It's oh gross. My goodness. But until a majority of you stop voting for this, this will keep happening. He said it's gross. Self-defense. Gross. It's not just that <laughs> what they're saying. What they're, they're what they're saying is that white people want to have the freedom to walk around and shoot people. Yeah, that's really what they're saying, even yeah. though no black person was involved in this whole case. Yeah. What you are seeing right now on TV, not with everybody, with, but with some people. You are seeing this hatred and anger that they have kept inside, that they have grown up with, and they are letting it out. You are seeing their true colors. And let me tell you, MSNBC has a real problem with racism on their network, and they have too many people there now that are really, um, I don't think racism is good on any side, on any side. Can you imagine if they had a white person on Fox talking like that about black people, black people, this folks, can you imagine it doesn't make it okay because it's coming out of a black guy's mouth. It is still racism. What he said is disgusting. Well, he basically feels that white people are in the clan and they want to run around with nooses and shooting everybody they, they feel is right. What That's what he said. What, it's sickening. What you're hearing in the liberal media is they believe all white people on trial are guilty and should be convicted. That's that's just what they're saying. Brian, now, not just people on trial. They feel this guy feels that all white people are like this, yeah. that we vote for this, that this is what we want. How did Obama become president? How did Joe Biden? How did Clinton really? All we do is vote Republican. Then have we had Democratic presidents, Democratic senators? The Senate is now has the majority. The, the Democrats have the majority in the House, the Senate and the presidency. 
How is that possible yeah. if white people only vote Republicans? Well, listen, Give we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Have you wanted to get involved in investing but didn't know how or even where to begin? Then visit ExoticExpansion.com. ExoticExpansion.com offer financial education and tools to help users just like you grow financially. And don't worry if you're busy at work. They will send you stock signals through text and Discord. So you just follow their calls on when to buy and sell. It's that easy. They offer monthly and yearly membership levels to fit your budget. Membership includes one-on-one coaching, full-time advice, and stock calls. There's a members area where you can view their weekly picks, have access to their top 20 verified stock picks that always are updating, as well as a net worth tracker. And there's a lot more too. ExoticExpansion.com's goal is to provide you with the education that will enable you to achieve your financial goals. ExoticExpansion.com also have an app that's available in the Android store. ExoticExpansion.com. Crypto, stocks, Discord, tech signals, long and short-term trading, value investing, options, and financial education. It's all at ExoticExpansion.com. From author Jim Lord comes the book, Don't Wait, Lead Now, available on Amazon. Don't Wait, Lead Now is a must-read for emerging leaders and anyone in leadership that wants to up their game. Author Jim Lord captures some of the most memorable real-life leadership stories so you can use them as a tool to manage and lead others. Don't Wait, Lead Now consists of a series of insightful business lessons that the author explains in a relatable way. He uses real-life examples that are easy to understand and learn from, and you can apply these lessons to your everyday life. Don't wait. Lead Now is inspiring and helps those facing the unique challenges that come with modern business problems and solutions. It's also great for anyone in a leadership role, whether they lead a sports team, at work, or at school. Author Jim Lord's passion really comes through in this book. He writes from the heart and shares stories that have influenced his leadership styles and can help you as well. What are your copy right now on Amazon? Don't wait. Lead Now. From author Jim Lord. Available in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Also, visit the author's website, don'twaitleadnow.com. Gift giving is a nice way to show how much you care. But what's even better are gifts that are personalized. At ZippyCustom.com, customize your products the way you want. They have t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, caps, mouse pads, backpacks, items for the home, and so much more. You can customize everything using your own photographs, text, colors, frames, effects, and that's just some of the custom options. Personalization is what makes their items truly unique. Whether you're shopping for yourself or someone you care about or maybe your employees, Zippy Custom. Custom.com has an amazing selection that you will love. And your satisfaction is their top priority. Everything at ZippyCustom.com is of the highest quality at the best prices. Right now, they're offering 50% off your first order. And free shipping is available. That's right, free shipping. ZippyCustom.com. It's time to customize your products. ZippyCustom.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. You know, one thing I just found out about, maybe some of you have known about this for some time, but I think this kind of just broke Friday and on Saturday couple things with Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson is interviewing Kyle Rittenhouse on his show on Fox Monday, and it's the first interview of Kyle Rittenhouse. And apparently, this, this is the new part, Tucker Carlson has been doing a documentary on Kyle Rittenhouse for quite some time during the whole trial. Yeah. We don't really know how long. I don't know if it went before the trial or during the trial. And there's a lot of credit. It's going to be for Fox Nation, which I, I guess we're going to keep that app. We got the app for that Patriot Purge. I want to see this. Yeah, Tucker's doing a lot of documentaries and original content. I was watching something the other night on Ulysses S. Grant's presidency that Brett Baer did. Brett Baer's got a Grant book out, and he, there was a, they did a documentary on Fox. It was very, very good. I learned he a lot. He does of, good it. documentaries on there. I've watched Brett his Baer? historical ones, yeah. and, and he did a whole series on the history of tax. And um, they're very, their documentaries are very good. Yeah, so I guess we'll keep the Fox Nation. Do you know how much it is a month? Five, bu- five bucks. All right. So far, well, I, I got to keep it to see this Kyle Rittenhouse thing. Mm-hmm. But 
Okay, so anyway, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse is in this new Tucker Carlson documentary. The first interview is coming up on Monday. And I didn't see this. You saw this. You were telling me you saw Kyle Rittenhouse's attorney. He was on, was this on CNN? Yeah, one of his attorneys. And they and he was not happy with this Tucker Carlson documentary, and it no. tossed him out of the room a few times. Yeah. Which I could understand during a trial, the guy, kid's life's on the line. There's a lot of privileged conversation going on. Yeah, and it's a distraction. But what? Well, yeah. But what the lawyer said that was interesting is the lawyer said that Kyle has a lot of people around him that don't have his best interest at heart. Well, anytime you have somebody, you know, this is a very political, high-profile thing, and he's a young guy. He's you know, uh, not fully, I I know technically he's an adult, but your brain isn't really formed till you're 25 years old. And even that's not even always makes you an adult, but he told him to be careful. Um, and I think that's good advice about who he let in and who he trusted. I don't know if there's ever been a time where somebody did a documentary during the time of a trial like this, high profile, like Uh. that when they were filming and what would have happened if he was found guilty? And they had to haul him off to jail. What what would that have done? I mean, I'm sure it helped pay his legal fees. And I don't know if his mom works or what the status is. I'm sure she had to take time off her job to do this. Um, His parents are divorced. So I don't know what their financial situation is. But, you know, um, we'll see. Well, I I have legal fees to pay. Legal fees, which are very expensive. But I don't know if I can ever think of a time when somebody has followed somebody around. I could be wrong. And done a documentary during while they were on Mm-mm. trial. So this is kind of it's different. A new thing. Well, and it's also listen, Kyle Rittenhouse. He's got to make a living. Uh, he, yeah. he he can't go to school regularly. He's not going to be able to have a regular job anytime soon. There's too many social justice warriors on all the college campuses for him to get a proper education right now. So I understand he's going to be doing a lot of things for money and and other than sue people, and that's fine. But it's 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 really a risky thing because mm-hmm. what the lawyers the lawyers what he said could very possibly be true. A lot a lot of people could get involved with Kyle Rittenhouse, and I'm not saying Tucker Carlson is one of these people, but a lot of people that have other agendas could get involved with Kyle Rittenhouse For and sure. soil his reputation, well, get like, him in situations where he's yeah. involved in things that he shouldn't be involved in. He has to be careful, and like you have Matt Gates and Madison Cawthorn offering him internships. Well, you know that's great and all, but why don't they offer him an actual job that pays money? I mean, internships don't pay money, and where's that going to lead? Maybe they think he's going to run for Congress someday. You know, I don't know. He might not have those kind of aspirations. He might not have political leanings. I mean, he wanted to be a nurse, and maybe he just wants to have a normal life, and maybe he doesn't want to be. Um, you know, get into these political things, but he is allowing Tucker access. I'm sure. Uh, think he's I, paying him. You think Tucker's paying him? For absolutely. This? Yeah. I don't think he. Nothing, him, and nothing wrong he, with that. No, he, nothing at all. He, he deserves to make money. Absolutely. Just like anyone else. Like I said, his mom. Maybe you know. Maybe they need to buy a nicer home with a better security. He's had full security the whole time. His lawyer said they've had to pay for, and um, he's you know Nick Sandman was on Hannity. And he's been suing the media for three years now. And he said it's going to go another two years. There's some cases still not settled. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, I don't know if Kyle's going to want to do it. It's a long process. It requires money. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But he said that he always has to look over his shoulder. People come up to him all Sandman? the time. Sandman. He said, you don't feel safe. And uh, he said, people come up to me all the time. Some like me, some don't. He said, I'm very recognizable. And it changes your life. And, um, you know, obviously Sandman didn't go to trial or get accused of anything like that. But uh, he's, you know, very well known because of what happened. Kyle, I think, will be more, even more well known. And, um, you know, he's going to have to, can he just walk around the streets with his friends? I I mean, I don't know. Is he going to have to have security now all the time? No, he can't. uh, These things cost money. He's, you know. Well, you know, this... This, I hope, is a real awakening for the media because the media – talk about this a lot. They're a poison on our society, and we, we were talking about this at the start of the show. The media, they don't report the news anymore. It's all opinion, and I don't know. A few months back, I was watching – this is on YouTube. You can find this on YouTube. They had six to eight hours of just CNN's live footage on the day President Reagan was shot by John Hinckley. 
And it was very interesting to watch because the CNN anchors were there, and there was more than one occasion where they say, well, we have some information we've not confirmed yet, so we're not going to go on air with it. We're trying to confirm some information. Mm -hmm. The media no longer confirm information. They just throw things out there on television live to the nation and drive opinions on things and people in ways that are dangerous. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They have no fact checkers anymore. They have no integrity. And hopefully this will get them to start becoming a little more responsible. Well, I think it's kind of funny how I know his lawyer has an opinion, but then there's people in the media like Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo that were agreeing with the lawyer and 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 saying people are going to use Kyle and they shouldn't do this. And the media uses yeah. everybody. I mean, that's pretty funny coming out of their mouths. Because all they do is smear your name and destroy your reputation, and they don't care what kind of damage it causes, and then they move on to the next story. Well, we still haven't heard from any of the jury, and I w if I were in the jury, I wouldn't go public, but I would not mind seeing members of the jury anonymously, mm -hmm. where they have their faces covered and their voices disguised, come out and tell us what they saw, why they went not guilty. That yeah. might— that might help. You know, and, and another problem we have, you know, it's with Biden. You know, here's Biden. The, as I said, you know, the Department of Justice, the Democrats are trying to get them to look into this. And even Biden, Biden first said, well, that's the verdict. And then they released a statement at the White House after that saying that he was upset at the verdict. We don't we have a panderer, not a leader. Right. And whoever the president is. Whoever they are, set the tone for a lot of things. And what you have from Biden is a total disrespect of our jury system. He's troubled by the verdict. Kamala is troubled by the verdict. And as opposed to bringing people together after a verdict, they're trying to continue to mm -hmm. pour salt in a wound that cause, causes more and more trouble. And the, the whole Democrat Party, all they do is say what they think some people in their base want to hear. All they do is pander and they pander so much mm -hmm. and on very dangerous things like they're doing now it's it's very problematic and they should and, and biden and kamala should be much more responsible than they're being now i want to take a moment to thank all of our patreon supporters for their support of the program thank you so much and it's greatly appreciated and you know when you're a patreon supporter there are a lot of of benefits to becoming a Patreon supporter. You get a commercial-free edition of each and every podcast episode. There is merch for certain levels of support. The, uh, we have a private Marco Polo group that's just for Patreon supporters. We have one that's regular for everybody, but we also have an exclusive group just for Patreon supporters on Marco Polo. You get access to that when you become a Patreon supporter on our Patreon page. Our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you on each and every episode. So the names you're about to hear, these are our top Patreon supporters, and we want to give a big thank you to all our top Patreon supporters, Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, Rich, Nick, Pamela, D, Rick, Paul, and Jacqueline. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode. You click the link. It takes you to the Brian Craig Show podcast Patreon page, and it's pretty self-explanatory there, okay? And uh, become a Patreon supporter. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, this um, story came out the other day. Listen to this. This is Fox News. ABC, CBS, NBC, and CNN skip the Department of Justice whistleblower story revealing threat tags targeting parents at school board meetings. This came out the other day, and this is a big story, not just because they're treating parents at school board meetings like terrorists. It's that the attorney general denied it was happening, and it can, he lied to Congress about it, mm -hmm. and they're not even covering it. You know, the media are not independent. I think most MAGA people understand this. The media are an arm of the deep state. They're an arm of the political establishment. And they don't like these parents and school board meetings because what happens to these – well, they're, they're, the Democrats are targeting local politics from a national level more than you realize. This critical race theory in the school boards is a big move they've been making, and p parents are resisting it. So well, they're, and the parents, they're brought, the parents brought – put a spotlight on it. 
yeah. the parents uh, are objecting to it and they made it a national story. And that's the last thing they want to do. They were trying right. to sneak it in. They were trying to uh, brainwash kids without parents knowing. And uh, what happened is during COVID, parents, kids were going to school at home and parents would see on the Zoom classrooms what they were being taught. And they started to have a little more involvement. And um, this is what they saw. And they freaked out, rightfully so. And, they're, the, the, you know, every, a parent has a right to go to school board meeting and air their grievances. And uh, that's their right as an American citizen. They pay those salaries. We pay everybody's salary with our taxes. All these government workers are there by our good graces. And uh, they work for us. They have to, that means they have to answer to us. Yeah. And they don't like when, you, when they're held accountable. And that's what's happening now. The, the cat's out of the bag. And they, they don't want people to know about this stuff. They were hoping to sneak it through and to just sneak it into the curriculum here and there. And, and without your kids ever, uh, without you ever finding out that this is what was happening. Yeah. Very and, subversive. And the Democrats, there's, there's a number of reasons they're cracking down on this. One, we found out that the attorney general's son-in-law, which means his daughter mm -hmm. and his family, own a big chunk of one of the companies. In fact, founded one of the companies that makes the textbooks and curriculum mm -hmm. supplies for critical race theory nationwide. So it's big money in that. But – but one of the things the Democrats are panicked about is these parents at school board meetings are now becoming politically active activists, and yeah. they'll be getting involved in congressional races and things in the community and yeah. presidential races, not just the school board. And the Democrats, they've not been able to handle these past few years of conservatives becoming active in politics. It's been going on. Yeah, since they don't like it. No, since 2010. And they're trying to stop it. And, you know, what's going on with this threat tag with the parents on the school board, there is no parent who's a threat at a school board. No. Okay? This is absurd. When You know, there, what, what's happening is, you know, education is required by the law. You have to send your kids to school. No, we're not opposed to that. But what's happening is, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, like Candace Owens, this really burned me. Well, t put your kids in private school. Very few people can afford private school. OK, most people are having a hard time in this country, affording, especially now. Yeah, they're, they're having a hard time affording uh, to fill up their tank with gas. And it's so easy for all these rich people like Candace Owens. Say, well, you know, send your kids to private school. Are you kidding me? So people are forced to send their kids to public school because they got to. They can't do homeschooling. They got to work. Private school is too much money. And they're, they got your kids. They're messing with your kids. They're getting involved with things that they should not be taught. That's more social, social propaganda, mm -hmm. brainwashing than an actual education. They're not teaching academics anymore. They're teaching social justice. Yeah, so the, that's right. Ideology. They're, that's right. And parent, when you start messing with people's children, they get upset about it. I'm sorry. People don't like their children. No, that's clear. Messed with. And you don't send your kids to school to get some new moral vision as opposed to what you're bringing to your child's life as, as your own parent. But uh, this, these school board meetings have the Democrats scared because they know – that these parents are going to be active in other political campaigns. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of these parents are not even – a lot of them probably didn't even vote prior to this because they're too busy to be active in politics, and now they're voters. And the Democrats just don't have the good sense to say, you know what? This is a very bad idea. We, we should probably tone this critical race theory down in the schools. They quadruple down on it. They criminalize parenting as basically, I think, a way to do it. They're, they're making it a federal – they're treating parents like they're ISIS or al-Qaeda. Well, thankfully, it's not working. Thankfully, uh, you know, they're having to backtrack. And, and, and then this whistleblower from the FBI released documents saying that they were uh, forming dossiers yeah, what the on heck? parents. And, you know, you can see with this uh, election they had in Virginia, the, the consequences of those kind of actions. They elected this guy from nowhere that was not a career politician, and they got rid of uh, McCulloch who is, uh, you know, been in the swamp forever. And I think that you're going to see, and then you had that state senator that won, that truck driver that won. You're going to see a lot more people getting involved in politics, that, like, like you said, normally would never do it, and they're going to be winning. And I don't see necessarily this having anything to do with Trump, a lot of these races. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing, 
and I'm not saying Trump's politically over. What I'm saying is the reason these people are running and winning in some of these races has nothing to do with Trump. It has everything to do with the radical left and how far they've gone. And people are, these are people that are, a lot of them might've voted Democrat normally. And it's just, things are too left even for them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're too radical and people are finally standing up to it. I'm not saying some of these people don't like Trump, but what I'm saying is it's not always about Trump. What's happening now. It's, it's transcended that now it's, it's other issues. And these elections, the left are losing. It's, it's not because of Trump necessarily is what I'm trying to say. It's their own doing. It's their own radical agenda. Well, they don't see that. That's right. They, mm-hmm. they keep blaming Trump. Well, Trump, Trump, that's not what's going on here. It's their own radical agenda that is causing this shift. But they don't want to see that, whether they don't want to admit it or not. They don't want to admit that. Mm-hmm. They want to keep saying, well, th- these are MAGA. These are white supremacists. No. What's going on is they are too radical. They're brainwashing kids. They're, they're forming, uh, they're like Hoover here, uh, J. Edgar Hoover here with the dossiers and the files on parents. They're doing things that are un-American and unacceptable. And it's like, it's like turning communistic here and people are not having it. And that makes me feel good that, uh, that people are standing up and everyday citizens, but you're right. That's like the left's biggest fear. We're supposed to get involved politically. We are supposed to be running for these offices locally. And it's not supposed to be meant just for a select few. This is the government for the people, by the people. So I like to see everyday citizens getting involved in politics. More should be doing it. And if more people got involved, the country would start well, to shift in the proper direction. A good solution would be, and, and I guess this has to be done at the state level, like here in Florida, Governor DeSantis, this would be very popular. I believe to serve on a school board, mm-hmm. you should have to, to be a parent who currently has a kid in the school district that that board oversees, who I agree. Why would someone be on a school board who doesn't have a kid in the school in that system? To me, mm-hmm. it's it, the school board should be more like a PTA than the than people that are just politicians to have a have a job. Listen, we're going to take a break, and I've got some new news on Kyle Rittenhouse. Can you believe? I I mean, it's just this poor kid what he's going through. When we get back, I'll jump right into that. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. There's no doubt about it. Exposing your kids to the internet can be scary. You never know when something will pop up that they don't want to see, and you don't want them to see either. The app Pure Now, available in the Apple App Store, can make the browsing experience safe and secure. Pure Now blocks and filters explicit content and keeps your family safe while using the internet. It's a free download, so you can download the app on all of your devices at no cost. But can you really put a price on the safety of your family? Pure Now is an app that's very practical in today's world. You don't see everything your kids are searching online. This is the best way to protect them from inappropriate content. Download it right now. The Pure Now app, available in the Apple App Store. Share the app on all of your social media so your friends can download the Pure Now app too. The Pure Now app, available in the Apple App Store. How do you really see yourself? Are you living authentically? The book from author Lisa Deanna, a world sold on image, available on Amazon and most online booksellers, is a powerful guide for those who are ready and willing to stop living in a false definition of beauty and start living in truth. Most of what we have been taught about beauty was rooted in childhood and is wrong. In this inspiring guide to beauty, author Lisa Deanna makes a solid case for what real beauty is. She takes out the cliche, beauty is on the inside and proves no one lacks beauty. We only lack the ability to see who we are authentically. Whether we realize it or not, most of us strive to be an image of what society deems as beautiful. An imitation is becoming our full-time job. While the author supports the importance of image, she knows from working in one of the most image-driven fields, cosmetics, that a flawless image is not enough to be beautiful and reveals the powerful steps to live a life compromised of beauty. Order your copy right now. A world sold on image from author Lisa Deanna. Available on Amazon on and most online retailers. 
If you're looking for some truly special art on Etsy, you need to check out The Night Jar online at thenightjar.etsy.com. The Night Jar shop features affordable, high-quality artwork, including paintings, prints, needle felted sculptures, and jewelry. Based in California, artist Tara Lyons makes original art that's unique and personal. Check out her glitter glass tree ornaments and her needle felt creations. She has beautiful one-of-a-kind paintings, cards, and a lot more. Tara's art is sweet, thoughtful, and collectible. Everything is delivered right to your door and packed with care. Looking for a great gift? Check out The Night Jar on Etsy. It's a shop you will want to visit again and again. Thenightjar.etsy.com Share the link on all of your social media. Thenightjar.etsy.com From author Frankie Albritton comes a new book series that you will want to add to your must-read list. The Midas Plot, available on Amazon. In The Midas Plot, follow young Matt List, who yearns for adventure. The son of a banker with a prominent but mysterious past. His unique abilities seem wasted as he herds cattle on desolate ranches in the Southwest while collecting debts for his father's bank. It's the dawn of an era when gold reigns supreme and a new power, the United States, led by a dynamic president, begins to exert its military and economic influence on the world stage. Having survived war and now a graduate of West Point and England's Cambridge University, Matt must use his background as a military officer, aviation pioneer, and founding member of the Federal Reserve to combat a worldwide conspiracy by Midas and his eternal ones to manipulate gold markets. Using dark powers, they change history to fulfill their catastrophic prophecy. Using the relics of the eternal ones, the choices Matt makes will determine if he will forever be with beautiful but mysterious Helena or permanently in the journey of the Eternal Ones. Start your journey to eternity with book one of this epic series, The Midas Plot, from author Frankie Albritton. Available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So earlier in the show, we were talking about uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. He's got to make money. He's got a lot of expenses, a lot of bills. He you know, can't make a living in a, in a normal way. Now he's in a dispute with his attorneys. This is in mm. the New York Post. Kyle Rittenhouse, former lawyers, are in dispute over who gets the $2 million in bond money. Let me read through this article. Oh, boy. I've only read the headline. I've not read through this article. He's, he was out through the whole trial on a $2 million bail. The next legal battle for Kyle Rittenhouse may be with his former attu- attorneys. Two lawyers who briefly worked on the case. These are not the trial attorneys. Right. The trial attorneys, they're going to get a lot of business now because they just got a guy found not guilty. Oh, so yeah. they're, you know, their fees, their with the, the, their minimum fees have just increased a lot. And they got, oh, yeah, know, for sure. Uh, two lawyers who briefly worked on so these guys, since they briefly worked, there's no book deal, no clients. Right. Two lawyers who briefly worked on Rittenhouse's case and helped raise $2 million mm. to help get him released from jail as he awaited criminal charges want their cash back. They say their cash. But the now acquitted team's family is fighting the move. Kyle Rittenhouse was cleared Friday. Uh, it goes into some details about that. Rittenhouse was released from jail while he was waiting for his trial in November after a $2 million bond was posted by his former attorney, John Pierce, with a cashier's check. From his law firm, former child actor Ricky Schroeder, MyPillow CEO and sponsor and supporter of the Mm -hmm. Brian Craig Show podcast, Mike Lindell, were credited with donations that enabled Rittenhouse's release. Um, Bond in Wisconsin legally goes back to whoever whoever posted it after the trial is over, which would appear to be the law firm. A second attorney who briefly worked on the case, Lynn Wood, Lynn Wood is back in the news, said the funds were provided by his Fight Back Foundation and should be returned to that organization. In February, the Rittenhouse family fired Pierce and have since complained that he and Wood diverted money meant to help Rittenhouse. I suspect there'll be a fight over that, Rittenhouse's current attorney, Mark Richards, said, according to the Kenosha News. John Pierce is the person who posted the bond. All the money was raised on behalf of Kyle. Lynn Wood and Fight Back say they are entitled to it. There was half a million dollars, I think, that came 
directly from Kyle's mother, Wendy Rittenhouse, from the money she raised. This mm. is the lawyer talking. So there's going to be a fight over that. And so I, does Mike Lindell and Ricky Schroeder, do they get back their money? No, uh, Ricky Schroeder and Mike Lindell, I'm not sure about Ricky Schroeder, but Mike Lindell didn't donate directly to Kyle. He donated to an organization which was raising No, but it helped money. with his bond. Yeah, so no, he won't get his money because he donated to an organization, um, Mike Lindell. No, uh, no civil lawsuits have been brought against Rittenhouse yet. There are lawsuits targeting others. It goes, it goes on and on. Uh, it says here, the family of one of the men killed by Rittenhouse is suing police and government officials in Kenosha. Well, as soon as Kyle becomes a millionaire, which he could, they may they may go after him in a civil case. They won't have any. They have no case. They, it, well, they, they have no they case. Still may. He was clearly defending himself. And let me tell you, if they go after him civilly, a lot of things are going to come out about these guys um, uh, and their actions and their behavior. I don't think anybody's going to sue Kyle civilly. Um, I don't, I think any lawyer is going to tell them you don't have a case at, at all. And, and they're going to dig into, uh, your family member's history and their criminal background and their behavior. And it's going to be, a, it's going to be a waste of time, but this whole thing with the bond. So I guess if you're acquitted, you get that bond money back. Well, yeah. And the is thing that how is, it works? yeah. And the thing is, it's a lot of money, $2 million. You know, the Rittenhouse family are not wealthy people yet. No, give it to them. Give they're them not, the money. They're not wealthy people yet. They will be, hopefully. They deserve it. You know, go, what, what they're going to have, see what they're going through already? Give. The, I would say give Kyle the money. They should do the right thing. Well, what and happened give is. give Kyle that money. What happened is, since they are they're just regular middle class people, mm -hmm. like most of us, they didn't have a mechanism to handle that kind of money. Right. They They obviously let the attorney handle the money's raised for the bond. And they were more concerned about keeping him out of jail than getting together with accountants and financial planners. And it's a mess. It's just a mess. Yeah. Well, you anytime know? there's money involved, there's going to be corruption and there's going to be problems. I don't like Linwood. I never have. And he was there, I guess, around in the beginning and they, they got rid of him because he's I know he was represented Richard Jewell. And that's his claim to fame. Oh, did he really? Yeah, but he's That's he why is he did. A, I forgot about yeah, that. He's, yeah. He's to me not anybody credible. I don't like him at all. Well, Lynn Wood's about Lynn Wood. He's right, a, he's exactly. A he's an opportunist. He, he's kind of like yeah. a Gloria Allred type publicity hound. Well, what'll happen is they have records of who put the money to who put up the money, and legally, like they said, it'll go back to whoever posted the bond. So whatever group, I don't know if they pulled all the money together, whoever posted that money. OK, so say they pulled all the money together and they gave it to you to post his bail under your organization. That money's going to go back to you and then you decide what happens to it. Yeah. Hopefully they'll do the right thing. And but I don't think they will. And, uh, you know, everybody wants their piece of the action. And right now he in, on the right, he's a hot commodity. And uh, I want to know what you guys think about Tucker doing this documentary. I think it's a good thing. And maybe watch the documentary until you decide. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I like it. Because, I'm, I'm excited about it. Well, I'm sure. But, you know, Kyle's still a young guy. And I'm sure he's excited to have Tucker Carlson in his corner and, and all this stuff. But, you know, and I'm sure it'll make him look favorable. But I don't know how I feel about letting somebody have that much access. And it was pretty risky because if he would have gone to jail, it, it would not have had a happy ending. And that would have been awful. And uh, luckily he was acquitted. I'm just not sure how I feel about having somebody document things. The lawyers did not like it. Most of them were not happy. They felt it was very intrusive and a little opportunistic of Tucker. I'm kind of on the fence about it. As a mother, I think I just see it differently. But tell me what you guys think. Do you think it's a good thing that Tucker – and wait till you see the documentary. Did it? Do you think that it was – should not have happened at that time and maybe it was a little opportunistic of Tucker to do it? I'm just curious well, what you know, your opinion is. I, I think it's important for people to see what Kyle Rittenhouse went through. True. But, but you know, one thing about this case that's so important to people, it's not – a political victory. They're acting like, oh, you know, right wingers are having this. It's it's not about a political victory. No, it's about whether or not this country is going going to be governed by the rule of law mm -hmm. or mob rule. And I when agree. you and the and the reactions we were talking about from MSNBC, CNN, Juan Williams, Biden, they're and, making it political. Biden and Kamala Harris. Okay, they're yeah. taking a knee to mob rule because right. the mob want wanted Kyle Rittenhouse convicted. 
Biden had to walk back his statement and said, well, that's the jury verdict. Then he had to come back and, and you hear what Kamala's right. doing. They're pandering to a mob. And that's that's frightening. And right. this this is this is a victory for law and order. That's what, you know, make America great again. You know, President Trump's movement and campaign slogan is about this country being governed by our Constitution and rule of law, not activist judges and mobs. Yeah, I mean, the left are making this very political. And I think what happened is, you know, somebody was upset because he was tried in Kenosha because it's 75 percent white. Well, that's where all this happened. It happened in that community and it affected those people that live there. So they had every right to judge on this because they had to live through it. Yeah. And it should not have been changed to a different place. That's why O.J. Simpson, I think, got off because they didn't have the trial in Brentwood where the crime happened. Instead, they were worried about the riots. So they had the trial in, in, in L.A. County downtown. But if they would have had the trial in Brentwood where it would have been judged by his peers, by people that lived in his community, that lived that, that knew Nicole, that might have had a different outcome. The people where the crime happens are the ones who should pass judgment. And I think the people in that community saw what happened. They lived there. They saw the rioting. They saw the destruction. And they were upset about it. And I and I think they were there to support Kyle and, and let him know that we get that you were there to help us. And now we're going to help you. Well, you know, this is not going anywhere. It's going to it's going to continue to go on oh, yeah. and the left aren't going to let it go because they're brats and they didn't win. They didn't get the, they didn't get their way. So they got to act out. Now, listen, we're all out of time, but we'll be back next time. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll talk to you next time. Beautiful jewelry says so much about you. It says you have good taste and enjoy nice things, that you appreciate beauty as well as the world around you. The Ocean Rhyme Shop on Etsy, online at oceanrhyme.etsy.com, carry handcrafted Baruch pearl jewelry that's stunning and unique, just like you. They make gorgeous pearl pieces like earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and a whole lot more. Everything at oceanrhyme.etsy.com is lovely and sparkly, perfect for yourself or someone you care about as a gift. Artist Julia creates the most stunning pearl pieces. You will love the jewelry you buy from OceanRhyme.Etsy.com. Each piece is made with care and is very special. Whether you want black pearls, golden South Sea pearls, Tahitian pearls, or freshwater pearls, you will find it at OceanRhyme.Etsy.com. They have a wide variety to choose from. Before you shop for jewelry or gifts anywhere else, be sure to visit OceanRhyme.Etsy.com. Share the link on all of your social media so your friends can discover Discover the shop too. OceanRhyme.etsy.com. OceanRhyme.etsy.com.